Hi everyone, it's a warm welcome back to the channel again. Uh, if you haven't been here before, my name's Peter, this is Thailand Bound, and I speak about all things Thailand. Right, it's a Saturday morning, that can only mean one thing, it's story time once again. I've got three very good stories lined up for you today. Before I get into the stories this morning, I just wanted to give everybody an update on the the book. If you haven't heard about the book, uh, people have been asking me for the last year or so that why don't you put these stories into a book and I've, I finally got there. Um, I have a book coming out on Amazon. I'm hoping next month it's going to be a, a downloadable um, Kindle book or a paperback and I'm now looking at trying to get it as an audible book. That's the difficult part. Uh, there's going to be about 50 stories contained within this first book. If it goes well, there might be a volume two and a volume three. And as I always say, every everything, everybody is anonymous. Nobody will be exposed. There's no names. Everything is, uh, all the names have been changed. So if you're one of those guys who have been kind of hounding me for the book, not long to wait now, guys, maybe another month or so. Uh, and it's not going to cost an arm and a leg, maybe five pounds, six dollars, something like that. So of course, when I, when it's released, I will I will uh, let you know. Right, so let's get into the to the three stories today. As always, uh, there's a couple of short ones and one quite a long one, and um, I think you're going to like these guys. So let's not waste time, as I always say. Let's get straight into the first one. My name is Liam. My wife's name is Arm. We both live in Australia. I was divorced from my first wife in 2006. I spent a few years after that dating several women I met online. I always found that about, after about six months into the relationship, the real person emerged and then the problems began. I kept finding that the women I met had issues and carried emotional baggage from the past. I didn't want to deal with these kinds of women and they always wanted to change me when I was happy with who I was already. I was ready to give up on meeting the girl of my dreams. I had some friends from Laos who were going to go there on holiday and wanted me to go with them. Having never been to a, an Asian country, I thought it would be great fun. It was in Laos that I had my first bar girl experience, which was awesome. I loved it. What I loved was, although it was a, basically a business deal, you got the full girlfriend experience. And this, I believe, is where many men come undone. They believe it's real and after a few days they lose their way. Fortunately, I had my friends remind me of this fact. I had a great time, two weeks of bliss. That trip is another whole story in itself. Getting back to Australia, I was bitten by the bug. I thought no more Western women for me, but how do I meet Asian girls while in Australia? I worked with lots of Thais at the time in a food factory, but all the girls were married or too young being in Australia on student visas. Now in 2011, I found an Asian dating website and put my profile, up, my profile up. I was immediately overwhelmed with the responses. Although I had said I was only looking at girls 30 years or above, I still got lots of requests from 20-somethings. I was polite and explained I was 46 and I didn't want the huge age gap. The answer was always the same. I don't care about your age, you're a handsome man. You all know that story. I was contacted by a girl called Arm, who was 30 at the time. I thought, wow, I hadn't seen her profile before. Her photo showed her wearing blue shorts and a red shirt, nice legs and a lovely smile. Not trying to look sexy, just a natural pose in her photo. So I replied to her. Back then, Skype was used mostly, so we video chatted and text a lot. Arm explained she had no computer, so we could only video chat from her friend Joe's house, Joe is a Thai woman who is 35 years old. That was fine by me and we arranged a chat when Am visited Joe's house. I thought, I'm not going to waste months on this as I had before with the Western girls. So I told Am after four weeks I was coming out to Thailand to meet her. I wanted to know if she was a real deal. She was shocked that I was coming to see her so quickly, but said, yes, it's a great idea. Arm's English was okay, but very broken. However, we managed to communicate a little. I booked a resort close to her village, just outside Kong Ken. Yes, she is a rural Isan girl. I had booked myself into the resort for 10 days. I thought to myself I was mad, but I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. Upon arriving into Kong Ken Airport, I was greeted by Am and what seemed like the whole village, but was actually her parents and extended family. Am looked so tired visibly and she later explained she couldn't sleep thinking about me coming to Thailand. 
The family would not let me carry my own bags to the waiting car. I didn't have to do anything. Everyone seemed so happy at my arrival. I had a major culture shock as this was my first time alone without friends in an Asian country and I didn't understand a word of Thai. The welcoming committee dispersed and Arm's parents drove us to the resort about 15 minutes from the airport. I checked in. My bags were taken to a poolside room. Arm came with me and asked if she could see the room. I said sure. I had booked a suite and it was so cheap compared to Australia. Arm's parents waited at reception. After looking at the room, Arm asked me straight out if I would like her to stay with me. I think that's an old brainer, I thought. I said yes immediately. Arm went back to her parents' house, got a small bag that she had prepared in anticipation of me saying yes to her, staying with me and return to the resort. Her parents left to go back home and Am and I were now alone. I had a shower and changed into shorts and a t-shirt while Arm waited on the bed. It was about midday by now. We went for a walk around the resort gardens. It was a beautiful place with a restaurant, bars and an amazing pool area. We held hands and talked about nothing really. We were sizing each other up I guess. I was feeling hungry now and suggested we go and eat at the restaurant. I let Am order for me. We sat opposite each other and Am kept looking away when I made eye contact. I asked her why and she said she was shy when people watched her eat. I thought that's cute. After we ate, I said I wanted to go and try the pool. I had bought her a swimsuit as a present in Australia that I had with me. Back at the room, I gave it to her. She looked impressed. It was a bikini top and boy shorts with an overskirt, nothing too revealing. My heart had said G-string, but my brain said be sensible when I bought it. I just got lucky with the size. Back at the suite, Arm went into the bathroom to change. I sat on the bed and waited for her. When she came out, I told her she looked beautiful. I felt like a teenager on his first date. Thai women can have this effect on a guy. I gave her an awkward hug and told her how nice it was to finally spend time with her. An awkward silence followed and Am said, I need to tell you something. Please understand that Am's English was not brilliant, but it was understandable. I never questioned how a country girl from Isan could speak English as well as she did, but I was about to find out. I never questioned how a country girl from Isan could even speak English as well as she did, but I was about to find out. She began by telling me she had already been to Australia on a tourist visa and previously had an Italian boyfriend, but that he had not treated her well. He was reasonably well off and had a big boat. She stayed on this boat, was but, but was basically used as a slave and not treated well and never had money. So you can imagine my shock at this. She went on to say she basically had to have bedroom aerobics with him and had to look after his friends too. I was speechless and totally caught off guard. Am had never mentioned being in my country before. I said, look, it's okay. I'm glad you told me. I held her hand, I held her hand and she broke down crying. I didn't know what to do. It was like she had lifted a heavy burden and all the pain was being released right here in my presence. I said, look, it's okay. I am glad you told me. I held her hand and she broke down crying. I didn't know what to do. It was like she had lifted a heavy burden and all the pain was being released right here in my presence and I had barely been in Thailand for four hours. Then she said she had to tell me some more. I said, okay, what? She went on to explain she had previously been a freelancer working girl and she had done this for eight years in Phuket and that's how she met the Italian guy. You can only imagine how I was feeling at this stage. I didn't have an answer and I didn't know what to do. Should I judge and condemn her for things she had done before I met her? Should I walk away cursing her? Actually, what I did was to give her some tissues and ask her why she was telling me all this now. She said she was afraid if she didn't tell me now, someone else would and I would hate her. So time out and remember, I'm in Thailand now and the girl I met online turns out to have more than a few skeletons in her closet. I had no choice but to try and console her. I'm not a bad person and was trying to be sympathetic in the midst of my own shock. I thought for a moment, I am no angel myself and I've done questionable things in the past. So I said, look, I have 10 days here no matter what. Your past is past and I am here right now. 
Her face seemed to brighten up at this and I said, let's make the best of it, enjoy some time together. Why not start by you showing me around your village? Now you could not make this up, it actually happened. We went for another walk after Am dried her tears and freshened up a little. The gardens were beautiful, but my mind was racing. I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into here. We went to the pool and ordered some beer and a spy classic for Am. For Am. Knowing I was not going to hop on the first bus leaving Kong Ken, Am really opened up and told me how she had worked in a shoe factory but could not make them enough to take care of the family. She was the eldest child. A friend had suggested going to Patia where they could make a lot of money. Being desperate to take care of her family, Am agreed to go to Phuket. Her parents thought that Am was working cleaning rooms in a hotel, but personally, I doubt that. Am told me once in Phuket she could not believe how easy it was to make money from tourists, but she never lost sight of her dream to go overseas, get a real job, make real money and marry a Western guy who would love her and take care of her. She just wanted a man to treat her with respect and dignity, not like the Phuket tourist who used her then tossed her aside like a used toy. Thai men were not interested in her because at 30 she was no longer an attractive catch to local men. Her friend Joe was with an English guy named Peter. They both lived in Konken for the last six years. We went out clubbing with them and had a ball. All Am had told me just melted into the background as the days passed as they do. One night the four of us went to a club called Top West. Crazy place, all the Thai staff dressed as cowboys and the band likewise. Am was dancing with her friend while us guys watched on. While watching Am dancing with a big smile on her face, everything seemed to slow down in my mind. I thought to myself, how could this nice girl be dealt such a bad hand? It is true to say that she chose to go to Phuket, but I know now that she had very limited options. During my 10 days in Kong Ken, we spent every minute together and shared a bed and shower together, but no bedroom aerobics. That was not important at the time, which is very unlike me. I would later learn that her friend Joe was the one who initially emailed me. Arm um had paid Joe 15,000 baht for her to find a man for Arm. Um. There is a thriving business in Thailand for women who speak English to act as agents for girls who want to go on dating sites but cannot speak for themselves. So my time had come to leave Thailand. Later, Arm um said she thought she would never hear from me again. She never asked for any money or gifts. I bought her a few clothes and shoes as she was badly in need of these and that was it. As soon as I returned to Australia, I called Am and said I was coming back. I had a lot of annual leave, so no problem. So three months later, I was back in Thailand with Am. I told her, remember what I said, the past is the past. As I said, she actually thought I would never come back to visit her again, so this was a huge surprise to her. On my second trip, I was able to visit Am's house. I was shocked at the level of poverty. Arm um had no bed, just a thin mat on the floor, no pillow and a sarong for a blanket. Believe me, this was not staged for my benefit. Her parents slept on the floor too. The bathroom, if you could call it that, was a big tank of water and a plastic bucket outside. The toilet was a hole in the ground. No hot water and cooking was done outside over a wood fire. It was typical basic Isan country life. I could not stay at the house because we were not married and her family was traditional in that way, but I booked the same resort and this time the aerobics mat came out and was used nightly. I brought her a real bed and a laptop because it was too far for her to go to her friend's house to Skype with me every night and I hated the thought of her riding a motorbike at night anyway. I had the internet connected to her house to make life easier for both of us. She has never asked for a single penny. I just wanted to help her. Her friend Joe with the English guy Peter told me one night, please don't mistreat Am. She is a really nice girl. Peter met a sad end a few years later, but that's another story in itself. Am and I did lots of sightseeing. She showed me all over Konken and the surrounding countryside. We went out every night for dinner, often with Joe and Peter. They were a fun couple to hang out with and I had someone to speak English with and get the lowdown on Isan. Sometimes I would ask Am about her time in Phuket. She said she just did it because she could see no other way out. I asked her about the men. 
She said mostly they were fine, but she had a few bad experiences. Although she knew what type of work it was, she hated being disrespected. Like one time she said yes to three young Australian guys because she thought it would be a lot of money made quickly. What they did to her, I won't go into here, but it was more like a kickboxing session than aerobics. She said she couldn't work for a week after that. She also said she had a few Westing couples who wanted to, ex to experience something different. That was a bit weird to her, but it was all money at the end of the night. I never asked again about this subject because I thought that she felt awkward telling me. I probably shouldn't have asked, but I was interested to hear from a Thai girl's side. Also by now, I was really falling for arm, so I didn't want to dwell on the past. My second trip came to an end and on saying goodbye I had 5,000 Thai baht left so I gave it to her at the airport. Once again back in Australia I told Arm um, we would get a tourist visa for her and that I would send her 1,500 Thai baht each week to help her out. I knew for a fact that she wasn't working as we Skyped daily and it was always while in her house in Konken which is a long way from Phuket. So using a Thai agent she had her tourist visa and came to stay with me in Melbourne, Australia. Typical male, I was proud to show her off to all my family and friends. It was surreal in a way having my Thai girlfriend in my own country. I took her on lots of day trips and we had so much fun. My mother fell in love with her almost instantly. Arm was a survivor, and if you weren't told, you would, you would never guess her past. She had kept an amazing positive attitude throughout. After Am went back to Thailand, I followed six months later and asked her to marry me. I asked her parents and there was a big party. It wasn't that I needed to, but I said it was my culture to ask the parents. Am is 17 years younger than me, and honestly, that's the limit. No younger or it just gets silly. Arm was perfect for me. Joe and Peter and Arm's friends were there at the party. Joe came later and Peter was very drunk. He had been hitting on my future wife's auntie, which was pretty embarrassing. Peter was a pleasant drunk, but had an eye for anything female near him when he was intoxicated. Peter had to be carried out to the car. Joe lost face on this occasion and was so angry at him, but she took it out on us. She came over and she said, you know you're going to marry a prostitute, right? I laughed this off and told Joe, yes, I know because Arm told me everything. This made her even more angrier because her words had no effect on me. She would much later apologize to us for this outburst. If you remember, at the beginning of my story, Arm said she wanted to tell me everything before I found out from someone else. Well, here we are, a jealous friend trying to destroy our happiness, telling me something I already know. We married first in Thailand. It was a beautiful wedding, paid for by guess who? And yes, dowry of 100,000 Thai baht. I won't go into the wedding details, that's another story in itself. Guys, don't get a hang hung up on money. It was a beautiful ceremony and well worth it and a fraction of the cost of an Australian wedding. So a partner vi visa later, Arm is a permanent resident of Australia. She got her wish and I got mine. A beautiful wife, it's now 2022 and we have been together for 11 years. Arm is now 40 and still looks 25. I am 57 and we could not be happier. I sold the unit I had two years ago and we brought a nice little house together. Both our names are on the ownership documents. We have a joint bank account. Arm has a good job and her English has greatly improved over the years. To this day, before we sleep, we tell each other how much we love each other and fall asleep in each other's arms. On the property issue, Arm is the envy of many of her Thai friends because the men tend to keep the assets in their own name. I get that, but I trust my wife and she has been nothing but honest with me since that first day in the resort in Kong Ken. Arm helps me these days take care of my 82-year-old mother who will move in with us soon. Arm is a down-to-earth country girl, very Buddhist, and we go to our local temple often together. Arm just did what she thought had to do, what she thought she had to do, and sacrificed her early years of the potential to have children and a husband, just to support her parents and siblings. I admire my cheeky wife a lot. Arm has two nieces in Thailand, and we are committed to them, getting a good education and finding good work in the end. 
I hope you like this story and if so I will send more that expands on details I glossed over in this one. Kind regards, Liam. So there you go guys, a, a truly successful story. Now I suppose it's, it would be easy for people to look at arm and judge um, but at the end of the day, you know, who's perfect? And I know there's a stigma uh, and people might leave comments saying about her past. But at the end of the day, she's made a good wife. She's really happy. He's got a lifetime partner. Um, what more can you say? I mean, if they're both happy, you can't knock it, can you? Uh, and to be honest with you guys, when I read that story, it actually, I welled up and I can feel myself welling up now. Great story. Great story. Right. Let's jump straight into story number two. Okay. My third trip to Bangkok, about my sixth trip to Thailand, I spent a few days in Bangkok before going down to Pattaya. I was staying at the Dynasty Hotel on Soy 4 in one of the older rooms. Very good location, okay price and suitable for my needs. On my second of three nights, I went to Nana and watched some shows, had a few chats and drinks with nice looking ladies, then went to Hillary Bar too. I had a look around for some company and the couple of ladies I was interested in were busy. I eventually found one a couple of years older than I usually go with, about my own age. We started chatting, she spoke good English. I was interested in sightseeing the next day, she offered to show me around. I had a couple of Jacks and Coke, she drank soft drinks, I think she had one alcoholic beverage. Back in my room, we talked a lot, had a couple of drinks and listened to music on a Bluetooth speaker, a newish thing at the time she liked and I said I would buy her one the next day. She started to cry about her boyfriend, an, an African-American she had been with for three years, including living full time for two of these years in Thailand and had previously had a successful restaurant with him. Apparently, he had to go home to renew his visa and was now with his wife. She was not sure if and when he would be back, but he was apparently still supporting her. She was upset about it and adamant that he had been with his wife the whole time. I said maybe he had just rekindled things with his wife when he got back home, which made her angry. So I, I switched to, you're right, he's a bad guy. It was a bit weird. Here she was in my room planning on sleeping with me, a stranger, but upset about her boyfriend being back with his wife. The next day, she showed me around the King's Palace, the reclining Buddha, etc. I was not allowed to take any photos with her, so they could not get back to her boyfriend accidentally if I put them online. She got me to buy her some shoes, makeup and speakers, etc. She persuaded me to spend more on gifts than I wanted to by telling me that she had saved me money on the sightseeing by not drinking alcohol herself. She bragged about the house she had built up country which has three bedrooms, one bathroom and a European style kitchen etc. And in the main house an outdoor lounge and Thai kitchen, then a sleep out with four more bedrooms, a 60 inch TV with a satellite dish with 300 plus channels. She showed me photos on her Facebook. The American boyfriend had paid for this and different family members lived in it seemingly to come and go as they pleased. She was only home one to two months a year. I had fun with her. She was refreshingly honest. She talked about other boyfriends, an English guy that was paying for her daughter's university and a Canadian guy I gathered was sending her money so she did not have to freelance anymore. And he rang her at 7 p.m. every night. I'm sure there were more. She talked about her three condos she owned up country near her house, which she rented out and she owned the one she lived in, in Bangkok on Soy 10. It made me wonder why she was still freelancing. At the end of our time, she wanted to stay in contact. I was not allowed to have her Facebook as her boyfriend was on it, but got an email and we sent the occasional message. No demands for money or sick buffaloes, etc. Just chat and hope to see you next trip with no pressure or fake BS. I saw her a few times over the next couple of trips. I continued to be too generous with the gifts, but enjoyed her honesty. And she spoke good English, so we were able to talk something that can be lacking in short-term relationships with Thai girls. One trip while we were talking in my room, she said she had never been to Pattaya and would like to check it out. Maybe she would come down and see me. I had been silly enough to tell her enough details so I think she would have been able to find me and as I had been enjoying her company and to avoid her surprising me, asked her to come to Pattaya with me. She negotiated three nights, four days. We had a good time. 
I showed her around and she continued to get presents out of me. I took her to one of my regular haunts, Billabong on LK Metro, usually early. At 7 p.m. each night, she would make an excuse and go back to the room to use a bathroom. I knew and had become friends with some of the girls there and it was sweet when they came and warned me that she was not going to use the bathroom, she was calling her boyfriend. I reassured them all that I knew and was not bothered at all. I felt I was spending more than I should and I was getting a little bored. She got her 19 year old daughter down from Bangkok for the last night and day. She was quite naive and it was amusing taking her to walking street. We got turned away from most clubs and bars because of her age. Her mother was keen to show her a little as she was aware now she was in uni. Her friends were going out and she knew she was too scared to go out with them and was missing out. It got boring as neither of them drank alcohol. We were not allowed in many places and I was not on the hunt. So we went home fairly early. I remember being at the carousel bar and watching the daughter's face as we came round into the view of a go-go bar doors as they were open. She was so shocked and curious it was classic. I had a one bedroom unit that trip off Moo 9 Soy Boomerang Soy 15 Bacal so the daughter slept on the couch in the lounge. The next day the shopping spending kicked into overdrive at my expense which was making me feel exploited. After a while I said I was over my budget, had to stop spending. They suddenly worked out they needed to get an earlier bus back to Bangkok so the daughter could get an assignment done for university. I was relieved to get them gone. I was a little upset feeling used so was not planning on seeing her the next trip. But the last night in Bangkok I ended up drunk in the Hillary bar. She was not there and I was relieved. I picked up another girl and she turns up and gives me a filthy look. As I left, she grabbed me, but I shook her off. I got a dirty email, which made me feel like I'd got revenge for being used. I don't think I went back to Bangkok for a couple of years. Out of the blue, I got an email from her pleading poverty. She said that business was bad and she could not pay her rent and she was about to get kicked out of her condo in Bangkok. At first, I was angry that she would try and con me, but after I had calmed down, I realized she was just doing what she could to survive. I sent her back an email saying, why should you kick yourself out of the Bangkok condo that you own? If business is bad, why don't you go home to your big house with your big screen TV? If your house is too full of your family, why don't you stay in one of your three condos up there? After a day and a half, I get an email back simply saying, LOL, laugh out loud. I forgot you know me so well, she said. I planned on not seeing her again, but it reminded me no matter how well we think we get to know these girls, you will almost always remain a mark to a bar girl. About one year later, I did a trip with friends and we did two nights in Bangkok before going to Pattaya. He had not done Soy 4 area, He'd, he had done a different section of Bangkok years before. I enjoyed playing tour guide. We did Nana Plaza the first night and had a lot of fun. Second night we met another friend from back home that had come back from traveling somewhere else. We met on Carlson Road. He had two American backpacker girls in tow that he was interested in and wanted to go around the adult entertainment areas with them. I was not keen on Carlson Road and they had been there for a couple of days already. We got out of there to my relief. We went to Pat Pong, despite me and the taxi driver warning them, they allowed us to be directed into a scam joint to watch a ping pong show. It was not much of a show and we got away, we got way overcharged for drinks as we left. I think we went to Soy Cowboy next. We must have had a couple of drinks in bars there, but fairly quickly we went back to Soy 4. We went to Strikers Bar next to the Nana Hotel and this was the beginning of seeing how cheap this friend was. He has no need to be as he has investments that would allow him to live very well without working. He went and got a beer from the 7-Eleven to say 50 bar and brought it into the bar and sat there passing it back and forth between himself and the American girls. The bar manager was not impressed and if we had not been buying drinks, I think he would have got his backside kicked. We next went to Nana Plaza. Our cheap mate was scared of ladyboys. He did not explain why, so we introduced him to a couple in a safe way, but I don't think this cured him. We went to a couple of go-go bars and our other friend found some company and headed off. 
My cheap friend and the American girls wanted to go somewhere with music and I knew the band would still be on at Hillary Bar, so we went in there. The American girls were also interested in talking to a working girl. I tried to dodge my regular girl at first, but it was unavoidable. She came over and sat with us and talked to the girls. I did take her back to that room, but it was not quite the same after her attempt to try and scam me. I asked her why and did not get a satisfactory answer, but she said she had sent the same email, email to a bunch of guys and had had some more positive results from the white knight types. I have only been back to Bangkok once since and have not been into Hillary Bar. My cheap friend did not seal the deal that night and convinced the American girls to come to Pattaya after two or three nights. He checked out of a small hotel where we were staying and he had prepaid for two weeks to go stay in a cheap place where the girls were and we did not see him after that. I heard from our other friend that he had started dating one of the girls and the three of them had continued traveling elsewhere in Thailand. Then he had hooked up with the other girl drunk one night which had destroyed the girl's friendship and after a few days that had fizzled out and he had he headed back home so so there you go that's kind of like yin and yang black and white opposite to the last story but um that that's something i actually personally i i actually really hate to see in thailand is when you get i know there's not everybody's got as much money as maybe the person next to them we're all on a budget i'm certainly on a budget some people's budgets are better than other people's but what i really hate to see is when you've got a live band playing uh, in a bar, it's an open bar, and you get a couple of, you get two or three backpackers, not young, they're not young, maybe, you know, four, I say backpacker, but they're just uh, hippie, hippie looking types, you know. And what they'll do, they'll go to 7 Eleven, they'll buy a beer, the cheapest singer or whatever it is, and they'll stand watching this bar and they get involved with the crowd and they're clapping, and it, it's almost like they're in there, but they're doing it on the cheap because they bought the beer between the three of them from 7 Eleven. I, I don't know why that really, really irritates me. I hate to see it, and I just think to myself, look, the ties are there, the guy playing the guitar, the band, whatever, they're working hard. They get a salary from the people in the bar buying their drinks. And these guys are standing outside the bar with a bottle from 7 Eleven. It, it really winds me up. So that, that's my pet hate. Okay, let's go into our third and final story. This is a very, very short one, and uh, I had to clean it up a little bit, but it, it's not too bad now. Uh, right, here we go. I always kept in shape and watched what I ate. So at 60, most women thought I was about 45. Having divorced three years prior, I just wanted to have a good time and was not really looking for a more permanent relationship, although if the right lady came along, I would not exclude it. Having been in Thailand many times, I pretty much knew the bar scene and there were not many things that would surprise me. On this occasion, I went to Pattaya and I remember there was a big club across from the movie theatre theater plaza. It was evening and I walked in. Inside and down the left hand side of the bar was a glass window with about 60 girls with numbered buttons on them sitting on what looked like carpeted shelves. The staff asked me if I'd like to pick a girl to sit and have drinks with me and explain they had private rooms where we could drink together. I ordered a Heineken and started looking. This was a high-end place and the majority of the women were very pretty. They were all dressed in evening gowns. When I look at a woman, I first look at her face. I also like to look at a woman's nice shaped figure. A number of girls were sitting smiling at me and trying to get my attention, but there was one exceptionally good looking girl that was not smiling, smiling and did not seem to care. Of course, I chose her, but not being sure how that was going to play out, I also chose a second girl who was also a stunner, but smiling. To cut a long story short, this place was a soapy massage shop and I had these two lovelies massage me, which was very nice. After the massage was finished, I told the older one that I would like to see her again and if it was possible to meet her outside of the workplace. The other one replied first that she would be also be interested. However, I was mainly interested in the older girl called Tung. Her demeanor towards me had changed and now she was smiling and said that she usually does not date outside of the club, but that she liked my personality and would agree to meet me. We met the next day at the movie theatre, watched a movie, grabbed something to eat, and then she took me to her place. She was living in a neat one-bedroom apartment, tastefully decorated. We sat on the sofa and started talking. Her English was good, and she told me that she had studied English. 
had been married with no children and was 25 when her husband died. She had been working at that club for four years. She was putting her money away and saving for a house in Rayong. After one more year at the club, she would have enough money to buy the house and retire. We made love and when I tried to give her some cash to help her out with her plans, she told me that she does not normally bring people back to her place and that she did not want any money. That surprised me and I realised that this girl really liked me. We dated for another three weeks and she never asked me for anything. I bought her some clothes and always paid for the meals and drinks. She continued working at the club, spending time with me when she wasn't working. I really liked this girl and did not fool around during this time. I went back to that massage place again only one more time. My visa was due to expire so I went back to the States. I kept in touch with Tum on Skype for about three months and was just about to ask her if she would be willing to come to the States when she completely disappeared. A few weeks later I went back to Thailand and to Pattaya and of course I visited her massage shop but Tum was not there. I picked the other girl from before and sat with her in the lounge having a few drinks. I gave her a generous tip and that was that. I wanted to find out what had happened to Tum. Nit told me that one night a girl from Bangkok came to see her and that she left with her and was never seen again. To this day I wonder if things would have worked out good between me and Tum had she come to the States. I was ready to apply for a fiancé visa but it just wasn't not meant to be um you know what i don't often like to be judgmental on these stories but what i will say on that story i think he had a lucky escape because uh you know she's in patia she works in a, a massage um parlor it's not you know she's not dressed in traditional thai massage clothes that like they wear in the real massage shop she's wearing an evening gown and she has a number okay and while he's out and about and she's she's working so what does she do when she's at work I don't need to say any more, guys. So like I said, I don't want to be judgmental, but I think he I, I think he had a lucky escape. Okay, so that's it. A little bit longer today, this video. It's gone on a little bit long, um, so I won't keep it going too much longer. Uh, all that's left to say is the same as I always say when I end these videos. I'll be on a live stream, 9 p.m. UK time on Friday. I hope you can come along and, uh, and join me. If you like what I do here and you'd like to support me, there is a, there is a link in the description uh, to maybe buy me a beer or a coffee, something like that, up to you. and uh, Or perhaps you would consider becoming a member, or at the very least, uh, maybe you could just subscribe but thanks very much for watching this video again guys and i'll have some fresh stories for you again next saturday